Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through the basics of how to set up Cubase AI or LE, Digital Audio Workstation, with your audio interface. Normally, Cubase AI or LE versions come bundled with supported hardware, whether from Steinberg or Yamaha. I received my version when I purchased my Yamaha AG03 small mixer audio interface that I've been using for many years now. And after I've done some videos on Cubase, I get this question asked all the time because most likely when you purchase your small audio interface from Steinberg or from Yamaha and you are using Cubase AI or LE, it means that you just started into creating music. And some of the setup may not make much sense. So I hope this basics of setup of video with Cubase and your audio interface will help you out. I'm going to show you how to set up with a simple audio interface that has a stereo in, stereo out, usually input one, input two, and a stereo out to your speaker monitors. So let's get started. Just a quick note that this demonstration is for Windows OS platform, Windows 10 that I'm running. For Mac OS, some of the options and the dialogues might be a little bit different, but the procedure is pretty much the same. Once you go past the hurdles of registering your Cubase AI or LE using the e-licenses software, or if you have a Steinberg e-license dongle, I do have a video of my adventure doing that. I will leave a link in the description or a card. You can have a great fun watching that adventure. So once you have passed that point, the next thing to do is to set up your audio interface so that the software Cubase LE can find which audio interface you are using and communicate with it, set up the different inputs so you can load your tracks to listen to those inputs, and then also set up the outputs so you can listen what you are recording. I will assume that you followed all the instructions of how to set up and install the drivers for your audio interface, because that's the first step you need to do before you run even Cubase. Once we have all the drivers installed, we need to tell Cubase where to find the audio interface. We go to Studio, Studio Setup. As you can see, we have our audio system, our MIDI systems, and all the other options available here. By clicking on the audio system, we can now select ASIO driver. Currently, it's selected as my Yamaha Steinberg USB ASIO driver which is my Yamaha AG03 mixer and audio interface. But if you are using a different audio interface, you can select the one that the driver has been successfully installed to. Let's try the my Personas AudioBox i2 to input to output audio interface. Now it shows AudioBox ASIO driver. By clicking on the AudioBox ASIO driver, we can and find out all the inputs and the outputs available to us. As you can see, we have input one and input two, and we have output left and output right. We make sure that they are all active and visible. Click OK. So now Cubase knows which audio driver to use. Now that we have Cubase talking to our audio interface, let's set up and tell Cubase all the different inputs and outputs that Cubase can use from this audio interface. Again, we go to Studio and we select Audio Connections. We have our inputs and we have our outputs. As we can see, we are using the AudioBox ASIO driver. We have input 1 and input 2 as a stereo bus. So we are now able to select a stereo bus to record a stereo signal using the input 1 and input 2 as left and the right. And for the output, we have only one stereo output out of this audio interface. And the output left and right are going to the output left and right. But if we are going to record mono signal, like a microphone or a guitar, we need to add another bus for this purpose. So I'm just going to add a bus a mono one 
and the bus name. I'm going to call it Mike. And I'm going to add another one. And again, mono. I'm going to call it guitar. Now they're both connected to the input one. So I'm just going to make sure that my guitar is connected to the input two. This way, I can have my microphone plugged into the input one XLR of my audio interface and my guitar into the 615 jack on the input two and I'm ready to go to record. You can always save these presets. So you can recall it every time you create a new project. So now that Cubase knows which audio interface to talk to and all of its inputs and outputs configuration, we can add our tracks. I'm going to press the plus sign. I'm going to add an audio one. I'm going to select a mono as my input one. And as you can see right here, we do have the hardware that we can select. Also, the buses, stereo, mic, and guitar. I'm going to select the mic. I want this to be a mono. And going to the stereo output. I'm going to call this vocal. I'm going to add the track. I'm going to add another one. This time, I'm going to select my guitar. Again, a mono configuration, stereo output. I'm going to call this guitar. So now I have two tracks, one recording the vocal, which is input one, and one recording the guitar, which is input two. Now all I have to do, plug my microphone, plug my guitar, arm for recording, and press the record button to start recording my performance. And finally, let's have a look at our mixing console. As we can see here, we have our two tracks, vocal and guitar. And this is our stereo output that goes into our audio interface. And these ones are the inputs. So our buses, the stereo bus that we set it up, and the mic and the guitar physical inputs that we added later on. This way we can monitor the input signal before going into the track that's being recorded. And then once the track is recorded, and on the playback, we'll be able to hear it on the main stereo output. That concludes all of the audio interface and input output routing setup. If this video was helpful, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And if videos like this interest you, consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheerio.